channel if this is your first time here and you're into 3d printing photography drones tech laser engravers and whatever interests me start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you won't miss anything we're talking about a small portable laser engraver today we're talking about the Nege 5 but small and portable doesn't mean it's less powerful let's roll the intro and let's talk about it Before getting into the review, I would like to tell you about a collaboration I have ongoing with Geeks Outfit. They're providing me all these wonderful hoodies and t-shirts uh, for the summer edition that you see me wearing on my channel. All the links for your reference will be down in the description. Go pay them a visit. I think they deserve it because their collection, their summer collection is amazing. Going back to the Neige laser engraver. As I said, it's a portable laser engraver. It engraves an area of 17 centimeters by 17 centimeters and it has a 12 uh, watt, real 12 watt diode laser. I mean, construction, you can feel it since the moment you take it in your hands. It's all in one piece of stainless steel mixed with some acrylic for the base. It's powered by two stepper motors and that guide the rail on which the laser moves. It's really well built at first sight when I took it out of the box. By the way, unboxing, you probably already seen it. There was no unboxing because the laser comes right as you see it. Laser is already plugged in when you take it out of the box. So the only thing you need to do is plug the electricity and the USB cable, set it up on light burn, it took really one second for Lightburn to find it and you're up and running. I mean, it's it was like really straightforward. I didn't know that this review was gonna take so little. I mean, I, I had planned an entire afternoon and after five minutes I was already engraving. Something worth mentioning is that the laser module has a focus dial here and you can change it using a flat screwdriver. I read online and on the instruction that they wanted to be set to 2.5 millimeters for perfect engraving and that you need to focus like on the small, like use your glasses to see when the that dot becomes smaller. I found it to be perfect to focus at two centimeters uh, with 2.5 millimeters on the rod for engraving. That said, everybody said that if I had to cut, I had to move this back to the basic basis. But what I've noticed is that the dot increases its size and it loses complete focus. I've tried to engrave something using that setting, but I probably was doing something wrong. If you guys know what I'm, if I was doing something wrong, just let me know down in the comments. But anyway, I performed cuts with the same setting of the laser engraver and they performed perfectly because it was perfectly focused and it was fast it was cutting through three millimeters plywood with like like a butter i mean and we're talking about a 12 uh 12 watts uh laser engraver so nobody was expecting super performances but i was really surprised by the way it worked let's get into some of the of the uh, materials and stuff I engraved. The first thing I did was some testing of my logo. First one I didn't, uh, I just put, dialed in 550 watt power and what surprised me is that it was too powerful. It was burning the wood. 
Second setting was at 1000 speed at 25% power. And this came out amazingly. I loved it. I mean, I love the way it went through the plywood, probably half a millimeter and it went great. Then I did these other two tests, one and two. And as you can see from the close up, they were pretty impressive on the speed and power that was dozing on a three millimeter plywood. Of course, there's not a review without uh, an image, laser engraving. I always like this image of, uh, uh, of the Wizard of Oz because it gives me depth and the image, I love it. I just tweaked the image a little bit, uh, pumping up the resolution and this was engraved at 1000 speed at 30% power and guys, look at the result. I mean, they look astonishing. I mean, I really loved it. I really loved the detail which it came out. It gives a 3D effect if you move it and I actually loved it. Let's get to the juicy parts. Juicy part for juicy parts, I mean engraving, start engraving on some kind of metals. The first one I tested was this on this visit card which is aluminium coated in black. Uh, in black uh, paint and it literally went through it and the result is like probably better than the last one I tested. I can't remember which one it is which took ages but this one was actually engraved. Hold on because I I wrote it down. This one was engraved at 800 speed at 25% power. So 800 speeds, that means that this took seven minutes to do. I remember engraving my first ID cards on black coated aluminium that were taking like an hour, an hour and a half. And this went like nearly through the entire area of print in seven minutes. So yeah, good combination for a portable laser model and for a desktop setup. I mean, again, I'm probably not gonna get rid of this. I like it. I like the form factor. I like that it's sturdy and I like that you can, you can stick this in a bag and bring it to a friend. That's not something you have, like, something you have to take into consideration when you're choosing your first laser. And probably this Nasia 5 sits perfectly into the beginner area. I mean, if you wanna start engraving for price-wise and what's what the actual laser is delivering, I think it's perfect for you to start working with something like this. Before getting to the, to the leather, which really impressed me, I wanted to show you how it, it performed on stainless steel. And by the close-up, I mean, this piece of stainless steel is not perfectly uh, flat, it went it went through a lot of bumps, so power was not constant when it was engraving, but nonetheless, it went through, it went through. It started the engraving stainless steel at 300 of speed at 100 of power, 100% power. So full power at 300 millimeters per second, which was really good. As I was mentioning before, cut was performed at 500 of, uh, uh, of speed at full power. And as you can see, it cut this in within one pass. I had done two passes on, uh, on the test, but I'm sure that only one was pretty enough. Just remember that the Nasia 5 is compatible if you wanna buy an extra air assist and everything I did today was performed without an air assist because Nasia were so kind to send me this unit for review purposes, but there was no um, air assist inside. There was a tube actually, but you need to purchase the air assist on your own. But nonetheless, without air assist, with two passes, it went through 500 uh, speed at 100% power and that worked great. 
Last, but probably the most impressive engrave I went through was on leather. This wallet is an old wallet of mine that was laying there. Probably I'm going to start using it again because I like it. I like the color and I like the fact that it has so many cards and slots and it's like really well organized. I really don't know why I switched uh, with the one I have. I don't know. I mean, I liked it and I wanted to engrave my logo and I did that at 1000 speed at half the power of the laser. So 50% of the laser engraver. And uh, I really liked it. I mean, it engraved perfectly. You can even read the, the, the 3D print geek on the bottom with the really weird character that I've chosen for my logo. But anyway, you can read that and it's probably not even three millimeters, the entire, the entire, like the height of the text. So I was like really impressed on details. This is something that can you can really enjoy engraving with this machine. And uh, you can bring it outside, engrave on someone's table, engrave on a wall. If you wanna, like if you wanna, if you want, you can even use, there's holes here and you can mount it to a wall and engrave while you're going just as long as you're focused in and everything is dialed in. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that is worth mentioning. It's his uh, versatility. I mean, if I had to use an adjective for this laser, I would use uh, versatility. It means that you can use it for many different things and uh, for the price being, by the way, guys, all the links to buy this laser will be down in the description go check it out. I mean, it's something that probably deserves a thought if you're getting into laser engraving and you want to start and you don't know where to start. This is one of the perfect lasers that I would feel of suggesting to you guys. That was all for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed and I'll see you guys on the next video.